Hey everyone, Charles here. And first of all, thank you for stopping by my podcast. If this show inspires you, makes you think, or gives you that courage to jump into action, please help by donating to this show. Click the link in the description and donate. Your donation helps us with production and finding great guests moving forward. Thank you and enjoy. You know you should be doing something different, right? Hey, I'm talking to you. Do you believe that you have the gift for greatness or have a special talent, but don't have the courage to take that next step? Always wondering how others made it look so easy? Well, welcome to Jump, the show that will bring you special guests just like you and me. How did they get the courage to jump into greatness? Doing what they love and living the good life. So get ready to jump with your host, Charles Matthews, Jr., Yes. Hello. 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 Hey, everyone. And welcome to the jump podcast. I'm not talking about jump up and down. I'm talking about jumping into your future. What's next for you? What are you doing? I bring interesting guests here like you and me onto the show just to help you get to that edge. I know you're looking down and you're like, I don't know if I want to jump. All right. I'm going to help you out. I got great guests coming on to help you jump. Let's go. My first guest coming on, Jason Saccone. (laughs) going on everybody what's up charles how's it going how you doing my friend i'm doing great yeah uh, listen Love it. Uh, we were talking behind the scenes and we got so much in common about this industry and what we do and the thing that really got to me and i was like oh i gotta have him on my show is how to be the ultimate guest yeah. you know how to be the authority on being a guest on a podcast and i think that's where a lot of people think that they just show up and just talk Right. But there's 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 ways around it. Like, you know, sometimes you know you have a podcast. Sometimes you're trying to draw things out of people and they give you an answer and it's a okay, you want to elaborate a little bit? You want to give me a little bit more? And sometimes they give you too much. Yeah. <laughs> and you're trying to reel them back in, right? Absolutely. So tell us what makes a great guest. But before we do that, plug your show. When are you on? When can we hear you? My show is called Evolution of Brand. New episodes go live every Tuesday and every Thursday with entrepreneurs and professionals in the branding space. We talk a lot about personal branding. We talk a lot about the inspiration that we want to give to others so they can, as we're going to steal your line, so they can jump and make that big leap of faith that it takes to go out on their own. And also actual strategies that the people that I'm featuring as guests have used to build their brands so everyone else can emulate them. So Tuesdays and Thursdays are where you need to be. Evolutionofbrand.com is how you make that connection. All right. So let's find out a little bit more. Born and raised, where are you from? I'm originally from Bradford, Pennsylvania, which is a small little town about three hours north of Pittsburgh, where I'm currently located. And Bradford is the home of the Zippo Lighter. That's where it was born. That's where it is manufactured. So that might be the connection that makes people aware of what Bradford is, because when you're driving through and you blink, you might miss it. (laughs) (laughs) Just in case, slow down. There you go. That's right. (laughs) Growing up, what did you want to become? What did you want to do? You know, I honestly, I never really had that clear thought, like as a kid, like I want to be a firefighter or a policeman. Like I never had that. But what I learned at an early age was I wanted to do something for myself. And it all happened by accident when I was 13 years old. I was big into football card collecting, sports card collecting as a whole. Right down the street from my house was a card shop. And I was there all the time. You know, Allowance would come, allowance would go. And I would be down the street giving it over for cards. But in doing that, I got to be friends with the, the shop owner just because he saw me enough and knew I was a good kid. And we were talking and he always would set up at these card shows where I mean, and these used to be pretty big things back, at least this was in the early 90s, where you would set up a table, you'd have your cards out, people would come and look, they would would buy them, they'd offer you trades, whatever. And it was a great environment, and I was always there having fun. And he asked me one day if I'd be interested in having a table of my own because he had a partner who, I guess whoever he was working with dropped out, and they had an opening. He didn't want to be tied down to his little spot the whole day, so he needed some help. And they offered it to me. So I had to pay a small price to have my own little table. But I got to put my collection out and I sold. I was making trades and I was seeing it from the other side. And 
when I looked at the money I made after the weekend was over, I was like, Ooh, this is nice. I want to do something like <laughs> this a little bit more. So that really got the ball rolling. So I kept my focus on what can I do for myself as I get older in life. And I did have a few different jobs out of college that I did in the corporate environment, but ultimately I was looking to build my own thing. And over the past almost eight years, that's what I've been doing. And that's where my primary focus has been. So it was the bug. It was always about the bug. The bug bit me early and it never, that, that rash never went away. All right. So I got to ask you this. What was the number one card you had? Well, it's funny. My favorite card to this day but it's depressing because when I look up the value of it now, I'm like, Oh God, I had made, I can't even remember how the trade came together, but it was this limited edition Ken Griffey jr. It was like a, it was a very like just nice card with a gold autograph on there. It was like maybe 700 of them were made. And I was so, I mean, at the time it was like a $300 card, something to that effect. I looked it up, was selling for like 12 bucks on eBay. Like, Oh, or deflating because this little collection I had when I was a kid had so much value to it. Right but now we're into this new generation of card collecting. And I've learned, cause I've talked to some other collectors and card shop owners. Just, I like to stay slightly connected to that. I always have that urge to jump back in, but I just don't have enough hours in the day to do it. Right. But I asked about my collection and they said, yeah, in that time period, there was such supply that mm. it, just, it just watered down the market and, the cars just aren't worth what they were. And that's the thing. Like I, I constantly look up some of my best cards on eBay just to see, and I never like the results. <laughs> so let's, let's go with that. Like you said, the value of the card, mm-hmm. how do you know your value when you're on a show? Like what do you, how do you know what your value is when you're bringing a guest on and stuff like that? That's a great question. I, I think what we look at from or at least what I look at from the guest perspective is you, you have this opportunity to present yourself as the go-to expert in your niche. More than likely, the host of that show is bringing you on because they feel that. They they see something in what you're doing through whether it's your own podcast, through videos, through your website, whatever means of marketing you're using to get your brand presence out there and to increase your visibility. There's something that drew you to that host and they want to put your expertise center stage. And so many squander that opportunity because they show up in sales mode thinking they have to give this illustrious performance and make a sale on the spot. In reality, your value is all in the expertise you bring to the table because people tune into podcasts to learn, to gain some new perspectives for some entertainment, to escape their world, whatever it may be for 30 to 40 minutes. And you have a great opportunity to indulge them with your expertise you get to geek out about what Mm -hmm. you love you're connecting with a like-minded person to do the same thing so it's a great back and forth and then when the audience hears it if they're into that subject matter as well if they resonate with your message that's when the sales take place because the magic will come when they hear your message and then they enter into your orbit and you can continue to provide value to them whether it's through your email list through your social media whatever it may be So as a guest, you have to realize your value is in your story and it's in your expertise and you put that center stage. Yeah, I I love that you said that because many times I want to talk to you. You know what I mean? I want to know where you come from, what you have. And knowing from you, it's just going to translate that, hey, this guy's cool. This guy knows what he's talking about. I like the stories. And, you know, I can I can I can be with him more than. I can sell you this. I can help you with this, get my course, get my this, get my that. But how do you know when to kind of slide it in and implement it as a guest? Well, the way I look at podcasting is it's the best stage for selling without selling. Okay. If I arrive and tell some good stories, have a good time, showcase that I'm a fun person. I'm a good connection. I can be a resource. What are you going to do, Charles? You're going to tell your audience, Jason's the man. I knew I made the right decision bringing him on. Go check out his stuff. Go look at his course. Go look at his book. Whatever I'm promoting, you're going to do the selling for me. So in essence, I really don't even need to dive into what I'm going to sell a person. And that's not my job here. My job is to show up with value. And like I said, be a valuable guest to you and your audience. And after that, 
if someone listening to our conversation today resonates with what I'm saying, with, with what our conversation was all about, they have full reign to look me up and connect with me and we can take the conversation one step further. But we live in a world where everybody wants that sale immediately and they think results are instantaneous. These results come at the speed of relationships and every relationship develops in a different time frame. So bring so, value and then you can build on it as time goes on. So then here's my question. Cause you said something that's very interesting. How do you become eye candy to the host to get you on the show? <laughs> the thing is you got to be interesting in the beginning, yep. not too salesy, but you got to be a little eye candy for the host to go. I want, Oh, I want this guy on my show. Like, you know, the little yep. things here and there. So how can you be the eye candy? I'll simplify this as much as possible because there is some strategy in this, but the simplest way to explain it is you make it about the host and not about you. And Charles is a podcaster. You can probably attest to this. Many of the pitches and presentations that get sent to us as podcasters are typically a bullet point list of all the accomplishments that this person (laughs) has made over the years. Seven figure earner. They've got a Ferrari in the driveway. They've got celebrities coming over for dinner three times a week. Like, Awesome. If you've accomplished those things in your life, that is phenomenal. And I'm very happy for you. And I mean that as genuinely as I possibly can. But that doesn't tell me what you're going to bring to the podcast. I need to know what kind of impact you're going to have. And I need to know if that impact is going to resonate with my audience that I have developed over time. So just because you've got money in the bank does not make you an ideal guest. So you have to come at me saying, listen, I checked out your show. I love what I heard. I heard you talking with Charles. You guys were talking about A, B, and C. Man, I talk about this with my clients every day. And in fact, I actually shared that episode with them because I knew they'd get value from it. If you're looking for guests, I'd love to join you because I could add to that and also talk about X, Y, and Z. Right. So now it's a completely flipped over approach. And I'm looking at it as this person can bring value to the show. They, they've they listened. They know what I'm all about. They know what kind of content I'm trying to create. Now I can bring them on and put their expertise center stage. And if they have accomplished all of those things, great. That's going to make them more credible down the road when people find them and enter into their orbit. But on my end, I need to make sure that I'm putting the best possible content in front of my audience. And that's how they can show to me that they're all about doing that, too. All right. Now, with that said, it's now time for. It's now time for rapid fire. My friend, we are going to throw some questions at you. You got two minutes on the clock. But here's the funny thing, though. You get to choose what set of questions I ask you. Now, you can elaborate. But remember, you got two minutes on the clock to get through all these answers. So tell me, my friend, A, B, C or D, what questions do you want? Let's go with C. Let's go with C. All right. Two minutes starts on the clock when I ask the first question. Here we go. What is success to you? Success to me is having the freedom to be able to do what you want to do in your life. And if you need to take some time to recharge those batteries, you have the freedom to do it. Nice. Sunset or sunrise? Sunrise, baby. Start the day (laughs) with soft, strong. Favorite color? Blue. Chocolate or vanilla? Vanilla. What's your favorite food? Steak. How do you start your day? Workout and meditation. What's the best thing you've ever compliment compliment you've ever gotten? That I have the amazing ability of having a conversation with anyone. What's your favorite TV show? Current or of all time? Of all time. The Sopranos. <laughs> if you could be any animal, which animal would you be and why? Oh man, that's a good one. I'd have to go with squirrel. Those dudes look like they're having so much fun and I want to see if I could actually do this jump across the road thing that they're doing all the time because these guys have some balls, man. There you go. Well, being a squirrel, what's the weirdest thing you've ever eaten? Weirdest thing I've ever eaten. Oh man. Uh I have to say pig's feet. Okay. What is the nickname your parents call you? I don't want to give this away because no one else can use it. Jace. (laughs) There you go. (laughs) In 30 seconds, describe yourself in five words. (laughs) Man, you stumped me on that one. Always ready to make 
an impact. I think that was six, though, wasn't it? That's all right. I'll give you that one, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> you made it through rapid fire. Listen, don't go nowhere. We'll be right back. CMJ Entertainment is a one-stop shop. CMJ Entertainment helps people do any type of events, and it's a marketing tool as well. So we'll cover everything from start to finish. If it's a wedding, we'll make sure your wedding is over the top. And if it's an event, we make sure that everybody gets information at the end of the day. Give us a call at 416-414-8964 or online at cmjent.com. Hey, it's okay if you're driving or too busy to take notes. Charles has your parachute packed with all the info you need to jump into success. Check out the links section for all the tools you need to land safe. Now, let's keep falling with Charles and his special guest. Yes, yes, yes. We're back live with my good friend, Jason. Now, Jason, here's a question for you. How can I guess be prepared or get prepared to be on a common show? Well, it starts with knowing why you're there in the first place. And I think the whole strategy of why you would be a podcast guest needs to be defined as priority one. If you don't have a target to aim at, it makes it very hard to hit it. So you have to understand what you want to accomplish being a podcast guest. Then when it comes to being prepared for each individual show, Take a minute to dig into that content, read the show description, look at some of the other content they have in the catalog, actually listen to an episode or two so you can get familiar with the flow of the show and how everything is built, how the podcaster handles him or herself. It's all about having a strategy when you go into it versus going in cold. I know a lot of people will just show up and hope for the best, but if you actually take time to respect this platform, and understand what you want to accomplish, but also what the podcaster is looking to accomplish. It's going to help form that synergy that you need to have a killer conversation that's going to then bring good content to that audience. Then everybody wins in that respect because the guest is going to have a great platform to tell their story. The host now has a tremendous piece of content to share with their audience. And then when the audience hears it, they can say, wow, that was great. What else is this podcaster doing? I'm going to start checking out some other episodes or even better, they start recommending it to other people. And that's how exponential growth starts to grow your podcast. So coming in prepared is going to help you be the asset that helps that show grow. All and right. Well, what, the same time. Right. And then what I, what I want to ask you, because I love giving my guests these tips and they can learn a lot more from you by just going to your website. You know, these are little small tips, but I know you can give them a lot more and it's right there on the screen. We'll put it in the description. So don't go nowhere. Don't worry about it. You're going to get all these from him. But as a guest, what information do you give the host to put in the bio? One time I've gotten like a hundred page. Hey, add this, put this, let them know about this, put that in, put this in, put that in. Yeah. I'm thinking to myself, is it my show or your show? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that can get a little muddy, and all of a sudden you've got a very long blog post on your hands, and typically that's not going to get read. The, the most important information is it's really where you want people to find you, and that's where sending people, I mean, this this ties to the call to action that you leave as you close out your interview, because typically when a podcast ends, a podcaster says, this has been great, where can the audience find you for more? And this is where a lot of guests will say, well, I'm on LinkedIn and Snapchat and YouTube and MySpace and Facebook and Twitter. Remember Friendster? I still have an account like <laughs> rattle off 20 different destinations. And by the time you're done, the listener is just, well, which one is that person aiming at? Well, I'm not going to go anywhere. So you yep. need to get people to where you can control the narrative. And that's your website. Start there or even better, a landing page to where you can give them something for, for showing up. I, like for me and I'll plug this website when we get done, but I give a free guide that I put together to help you get the fundamentals and the foundational steps of podcast guesting down. And then from there, you're also connected to weekly training videos that I do. And you're also getting redirected to my website where you can learn more about me. So I'm bringing people into my world where it makes the most sense. And I can tell the best story on social media, I'll be honest and fully transparent. I'm not as active on Twitter and LinkedIn, or I'm sorry, not LinkedIn. LinkedIn is where I am active. Twitter <laughs> and um, 
Instagram and Facebook. I just don't do a lot with those. And I've learned that you can't let FOMO tell you, you need to be there. If you're not feeling it, don't waste your time, put your energy where it's most valuable. And for me, it's YouTube, LinkedIn, and my podcast. So that's where I'm spending my time. That's where I want people to go, but it all starts with getting them into your world. So if you keep it limited to what you give a person to share, it makes it much easier for a listener to follow the call to action and not fall into this convoluted pool of which one do I go to? And then they're start they're like doing the little roulette thing and click on this one. And yeah, it's just, it's better to control the narrative on your website and on a site that you own, which social media, you don't own that. That could change the yeah. dial. So then is every podcast show for you? No, God. <laughs> no, 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 no. That's, that, that, that's the, <laughs> that's one of the initial things we look at is does this podcast align with your objectives? If you were to make a guest appearance on this show, would your message be heard and would it resonate with the audience? If you're in the financial space and you go on a fly fishing podcast, I guarantee you, your financial advice is going to be soft. <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on. You choked me up on that one. You put a, <laughs> that was so extreme. <laughs> right. But that's what the spray and pray method could lead to. If you just start throwing your name and your podcast, one sheet resume, whatever you want to call it at every podcast within a hundred mile radius, if they say yes, because they think that you're the right, because if the podcaster is operating under the, yeah, I'll bring anybody on mm -hmm. your message falls flat. It's it's you, you have to be very serious and strategic about the shows that you make appearances on. And again, that comes into that research part. When you find a show where they're talking about information that jives with what you do, it right. makes your outreach more valuable. And then when the show actually does take place and you have that interview, your message is going to be much stronger and prominent, and it's going to resonate with more people in that audience. And most importantly, with the person you're speaking to, Absolutely. for me, it starts with this, this interaction that you and I are having today, Charles, it's one-on-one. -on -one. Right. And I want to have, I want to make a good impression. I want to have a great time with you because that makes the likelihood of you telling more people about who I am and what I do much higher. If I fall flat in that respect and I don't deliver what you thought I would, you're probably going to write me off and never talk to me again. So it's more, again, more of a process and a, str a strategy than just showing up to talk as you let off with. There's so much more to it. And if you treat it with the respect it deserves, you can make a killing and put yourself in a phenomenal space as a podcast guest. All right. So this is kind of touchy. This is in the middle, but I have to put it out there, you know, <laughs> and Go here it, it goes. If you're going to be a podcast host guest, do you spend the money on proper tools? Yeah. Oh, 100%. That's not that you have to break the bank. And that's really, I, I think, you know, as humans, I think we put these obstacles in front of ourselves to just not get started. Mm -hmm. like, oh man, well, I'm not going to do this until I can get the best microphone in the world. So I sound the greatest. No, like that's the wrong way to approach it. Get a microphone. I mean, you could you could equip yourself for podcast dominance for under a hundred dollars. Yes, because really, I think podcasters appreciate you having a microphone, yes. headphones, and yes. a quiet recording environment. Yes, that's what it means, <laughs> and a good internet connection. We'll throw a fourth one in there. If you have those items at your disposal, you're ready to rock. And again, you could do that for under a hundred bucks. There you go. I just had to throw that out there. Right? You know I mean, Lap laptops are not not killing it anymore. You can't just have a laptop, people. Yeah. Or you know, don't call in from your car or from your smartphone. Like have an environment that's conducive to creating quality audio that people will really dig into because this is you. This is your brand. You want to sound your best. So spend right. a couple bucks and make it happen. I'm going this way because, you know, it's you, Jason. I'm, I'm going to have some fun with you. Let's talk about podcast etiquette then. If we're going to go this route, let's just go this route. <laughs> Please, let's, let's, let's name off some at least a couple of podcast etiquettes. If you're going to come on someone's show, if you want the value, and like you said, because it could help you tremendously, even, mm -hmm. if it, even if it gives you one client, that client could be the biggest client ever. There let's go. talk about podcast etiquette. And you touched on one. If you're going to do the show, 
make sure you're not driving halfway in your car. Make sure you're not going somewhere. You're in a quiet space. Oh, talk about those ones, please. Those are huge. I think in addition to that, not calling in to a, or, or connecting to a call via your smartphone, via a device. I mean, I know you can, but I feel you just end up with better quality audio when you do it through the computer. And it's more reliable because I don't know. I mean, you could turn off calls, but maybe something's going to sneak through and it mm-hmm. could just disrupt the experience. So my recommendation is you turn off your devices. Don't have them sitting in front of you on vibrate. If you can't resist the urge to touch your phone or your iPad or any device you have, leave it in another room and give that host your undivided attention. They deserve it just as much as you deserve theirs. And in order to have that good conversation that leads to the compelling content people want to hear, you can't be distracted. You can't be thinking about 50 other things. Eliminate all of those distractions. And I'll add to that notifications on your computer dinging when an email comes through, dinging when a message comes through. Incredibly distracting. Now, again, it's it's brief and it's and maybe sometimes even fleeting, but it just, it, to me, I, I'm, I guess I'm a perfectionist in regards to that type of quality. If you can avoid it, avoid it. Make sure you're giving that person your attention and giving them the best opportunity to create good sounding audio with you. All right, all right, all right. So here's one thing. If you had to tell anybody one key, one thing, and these little little snippets they're gonna get when they jump on board and you know ask for help, because I do believe that if you're gonna do this on a regular to help your business and you know you want to be a guest on more platforms and move forward, it takes training. Like you mm-hmm. and I talking off the off the cuff, we both realize we're both in radio. Mm-hmm. So we have this background. But if someone's yeah. coming in fresh and they come to you for help, what's the first thing they know they need to start off with? Know that you have to commit to this. You can't just dip your toe. Dipping your toe will accomplish nothing. You have to go all in and, and put at least one year's commitment into establishing yourself as a valuable guest, developing your skill set, finding your voice putting yourself in a position to truly make an impact and that impact is going to help you grow your brand, but you can't just take shortcuts and expect everything to come overnight. It takes a commitment and it takes consistency. I've been golfing since I was seven years old. I'm not great. I'm okay. I can hang hang and handle my own shoot in the eighties and have fun with it. But every time I go, I'm challenging myself to shoot better. And I know the only way that's going to happen is if I continue to put in the practice swings and be consistent with my with my game and with with my skill set. It works the same in this space as well. You have to be consistent. You can't just do an interview today and then maybe four months later try another one and then oh well, now I'll do two this week and none next week. No, like we have to develop a strategy that allows you to consistently be talking with people, putting yourself in a position to make new connections, build new relationships. When you do that, not only do you get better at your craft because you're consistent, but you open up new windows of opportunities to grow your brand. So it starts with the commitment and it starts with being consistent. All right, my friend, let's go. Here we go. Now time for pick three. It's now time for pick three. My friend, before we let you go, you get to choose the last three questions that I ask you. So give me three numbers between one and 13, and those will be your last questions for the day. Let's do one, seven, and 10. One, seven, and 10. Here we go. Number one, what's the one thing you wish you've known before getting into this type of business? I wish I would have started with podcast guesting myself versus starting with building my own show. I would have had more of an opportunity to learn and get comfortable, and then I probably would have launched in a much better place. I like that. I really do like that. That's that's interesting because seeing it from that side of the fence coming back around, I, I do like that. Indeed. All right. What is the one myth about your industry that you want to squash right now? That download metrics matter. I think we get too clouded by that download metric, especially new podcasters. They get fixated by a number that's pretty arbitrary and it can mm-hmm. completely derail them before they ever have a chance to break through. 
Yeah, yeah, I know. I, I, hey, I'll put my hand up. <laughs> oh, I was there. I was there too. Sure, I'll, I'll put my hand up. You put your first two episodes, and then you're like, yeah. you're watching it. Oh, yeah. There's, there's another listener. Okay, you're watching. There's another one. Oh, yeah. wait. I only got ten. What's wrong? <sighs> What's happening? Is this working? Like. <laughs> Yep, and that's I, and I'll, I'll flip that on its head. Like I tell people, listen, if you got thirty listeners, if those thirty people are in your living room, would you give them the good beer or would you give them the cheap swill from the bottom shelf? They're there. there. They've arrived. They've shown they have interest in what you're doing. Give them the good stuff and keep doing it because those thirty, each one of them could turn around and tell one person. Now you got sixty. Keep that's where the growth starts. Keep growing. Keep growing. Yeah. Love it. Love it. All right. Last one. Name two people, past or present. That you would love to shadow for a day? I think I would start with. Wow, that's a that's a really good one. I, I present day, I'd go with Gary V as one because mm-hmm. I feel like that dude's busy. That dude's hustling. <laughs> that guy is doing a lot, and I would like to see how the sausage is made in that in, in that little organization. Because I mean, I know he's got a team following him around and helping him create this content. Uh-huh. So I I would be very interested to watch how that unfolds and see if I could inject any wisdom into how they're doing it. I don't know. Right. They probably don't need my opinions, but it would be fun nonetheless. Right. And on the the flip side, I'm trying to think of somebody in a historic fashion. I would say probably, hmm, man, you got me stumped here. Let me think of a, I'll, I'm going to use another big, I'm a, I'm a big hockey fan. So, okay. I, I would probably go back and say Mario Lemieux, who's been one of my favorite hockey players. You can, you can see here on the video, I've got some things hanging up here in my studio that are hockey related. And just to see how a day in the life of a star hockey player turned franchise owner went down. I know he right. plays lesser of a role today as we speak, but mm-hmm. he's really made an impact on my city of Pittsburgh. And it'd be fun to see how that all came together interesting interesting all right my friend it's that time you know what to do it's the end of this show plug shoot shot it do what you gotta do well the website is there my friends jasoncircone.com that's where you can find everything if you want to know how the sausage is made on this side of the fence that's the website but also i'd love to extend an offer to give a free gift to all listeners go to enhanceyourauthority.com i've got a free guide It's called the Absolute Guide to Authority Enhancement, and it's really the first step to understanding this whole podcast guesting initiative that I've rolled out. Build that foundation, understand how you can make an impact as a podcast guest, how you handle that reach out. And in addition to that guide, you'll also have access to weekly training videos that I do, and they only go out to my email community. So check out enhanceyourauthority.com today. And like I said, once you land there, and pick up that guide, you'll be redirected to my website where you can connect with me for more. Absolutely. Listen, my friend, I'm so glad that you had the time to come on my show. It's been an honor and a pleasure for you to jump on, and maybe some people will learn how to jump and jump right into your website and get much better. And maybe, hey, you know something? Here's what we're going to do. Once you take Jason's course, you let me know. I'll have you on the show, because then I know you're... you're (laughs) You're a good guest to have, my friend. I'm getting him ready for the big time. That's there the you goal. go. <laughs> All right, everybody. I, like I always say, you didn't have to watch. You didn't have to listen. But I'm so glad that you did. It's your time to jump. Get the expert. Get the knowledge. Jump on a show. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time. Hey, hope you had a great time listening to the show. If you think I did a great job, please buy me a coffee. I still got a lot of work to do. We would love to hear from you, your feedback, so please click the link and leave us a review. You can help us grow by following us on all social media platforms and sharing this link. Once again, it's time for you to jump. Success is waiting.